welcome to How to Create Passive Income in Your Business. So let's break these down and we'll start with vision. It's the number one component. It has more areas that we'll dig into. And one of the challenges with this book is that when you understand it conceptually, it motivates you to get started, but the devil's in the details. You have to really work through it and, uh, and build this over time. The key about vision is that I believe if you're going to scale your business, it's imperative that you have a vision of what that business will look like when it's at its full capacity at the height of your imagination. Now, I'll have some people that will immediately say, oh, we're going to be in 150 countries, 5 million employees. You know, let's get a vision in which it's the extent of what you can truly explain can happen. In fact, you can explain, to me, explain it to me like it's happening right now. We are at this level. We have this many employees. We're providing this service. And so the, the key is being able to visualize that. Now, let me add something to this vision approach that may help you. When you're doing this vision, you want to do it with this view, that you have no shortage of time, talent, or money. I want you to start this vision process with this belief that you have everything in your life now settled. You've got all the time in the world. You have no time constraints to make this vision a reality. And if that were the case, what would your business look like if you had all the time in the world to devote to it. Secondly, what would it look like if you had no shortage of talent? Visualize it as if the smartest, brightest people are available and waiting on you to call them. What positions would be there? What would they be doing if you had an abundance of qualified people? And lastly, when you get those two visions clear, work under the assumption that you have no shortage of money. Someone off to the side has a billion dollars and cannot wait to give it to you. And with that framework, what would your business look like? You visualize the products you'd be delivering, how you'd be delivering it, who would be the people necessary to do it. And then we'll work backwards to see what would, how much income would you need to support it. We'll work all the way to the end to get a profit structure. Once we've got that, then our focus is going to be a vision of who these people would be and what role would they been, be playing. We're going to build an accountability chart. At the top may be the person who's the visionary. The next level may be something who's the implementer. And then what are these positions? Who would be in management? What roles would each person be playing? And the more clarity you get about who these people are, then the process just becomes putting the right people in the right seat. Now, you have an accountability chart today. The problem is your name is in every one of these spots. We've got to work to get your name out and get some other people in there. Any comments yeah, on? I, yeah, far away. Say something about that, Lynn. So uh, this is an unbelievably uh, powerful part of traction that uh, I just got to touch on. You know, when Paul and I uh, really uh, sat down and laid out that Paul's the visionary, I'm the integrator, and we got that formulated at the very, very beginning. Um, we used to, I can remember filling out an org chart with, I didn't have anybody's names, but we, we filled out this org chart two years ago with exactly the way we wanted the business to run. And it was weird putting that together, but it required the time because we were sitting there going, well, how are we going to, at least I definitely was, uh, like, how are we going to afford all these people? Like, how is this going to, how is this going to work? How, but as you lay that out, it was so powerful because then all of a sudden we started finding people to go in those seats. And, and we were the same way. Like Paul's name was in a number of seats. My name was in a number of seats. And we started to just replace people as, as time went on in that org chart. And it was unreal um, to, to now, just as I'm listening to Lynn talk about these different steps and where you might be at the very beginning of that, how uh, how it does happen, but it takes these step by step approaches to do the work, to work with a coach in order to be able to lay that out, so that then you can start filling it in as you go. But that is a really really key component in 
building this business to where you are not involved in every single aspect of it. And that is scary and that is difficult. And it takes a lot of discipline to pull yourself out of there. You've got to let go of that. And uh, I think that's the most difficult part, Lynn, for entrepreneurs is, is to lay out that org chart and then say, okay, now I'm going to start finding these people. And in the midst of that, still running the business too. It's like, man, this is really, really difficult. And that's why you got to have the accountability with a coach. And having a clear vision. Once you have a clear vision of what level of business you could be doing, you get the people in place. If you have these people, you could be, could be producing the income that you need to pay for them. So just kind of works in a circle, but you start with people. So let's go into a little bit more depth of how of building your vision and specifically looking at some tools that you're going to develop so that when this vision is clear, the number one thing is that you are you have the tools and the ability to communicate it to everyone around you. The key to growing your company is to be able to clearly discuss that vision with your staff, with your clients, with your friends, with everyone around exactly the direction you're on. And when everyone gets on the same page with this clear vision, that's when you can begin to make incredible progress. So a great tool that you start with and being able to communicate this vision is to develop some core values. Now, some people shoot for three, some will say eight, usually somewhere it's between three and five. Now, you see this all the time. A lot of people do this. But what you'll commonly see is one of two things. It's a single word as their core value, or it's a six-page epistle on every one. A single word is a challenge because maybe your core values are listed as integrity, honesty, of the, you know, commitment. And although that means something to you, the goal is to communicate to someone else what your core values are. And a single word can mean so many different things. If you try to explain your core values in a six-page mission, no one's going to stop to read that. So you want to try to work on your core values into three to five words, kind of like a basic sentence, and then maybe a little longer sentence to explain them. So instead of maybe honesty as a core value, you might have, we always do what we say. And then an explanation, when we enter into an agreement, we work every day to fulfill it. Something like that. And when you're able to communicate what's truly your core values, that resonates with everyone. And it begins to be the basis of what you're going to build this company around. Now, I spend a lot of time working with people to try to help them develop it. So I'm going to share with you a simple idea that seemed to work in getting people to develop this tool pretty quickly. If they're not exactly sure of their core values, I will ask them, imagine this. Something happens, and immediately God shows up and says to you, you're done. You're leaving right now. Your objection might be, wait a minute. I've got this business, and these people are depending on me. And so God says, okay, five minutes. Run in five minutes. Tell them what's most important to you. Now think about what you would say if you had to run back in and you had five minutes. Listen, everyone, I'm going to tell you. Here is what we stand for. Always do this. And that is the basis of your core values. There's other ways we can arrive at them, but it's very important that we develop some core values to build this whole process on. Now, J.D., I know you've been excellent at working on that. Um, any thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, just none other than the fact that core values are extremely, extremely important. Um, this is what everything flows from and when we came up with our core values value vibe collaboration courage um everything started to uh pour from that even our our guarantee of we're going to change the way you think and what do we do we build courage and create wealth everything stems from that it's extremely powerful to take the time to figure that out and to establish those Exactly. And when you get those core values established, you can move on to what Traction calls core focus. Some people call it your mission statement, but it's simply a, a statement of why your business exists. And, and if you can work on it where, you know, if you're a plumbing company, your statement would not be, we fix plumbing leaks. It might be, we have this company for the purpose 
of taking people out of the pain of a plumbing problem to the comfort of knowing that everything works. Something like that. What is this mission that you're on that this business is trying to accomplish? And then we'll start working on developing a description of what is your niche? What do you do in your business that's so uniquely fitting? Now, once we get that, we'll reduce your vision a little lower, perhaps, to a 10-year target. The main vision is a conceptual vision. Now we're going to start working on some numbers. How much revenue is possible? Where do you see the company being in 10 years? And then with that vision, we'll start developing and working on a marketing strategy. Start working on listing who is your target market. It's so imperative that you narrow down the customer base you're targeting. In fact, I will argue that you'll be known more in business for what you won't do than for what you will do. Who are the people that you will not work with? Who doesn't fit you? And be very clear about who does fit you. That's so powerful to focus on the target. And then we'll talk about three uniques. Why do you focus on that market? What's so unique about you that you can serve that market so well? We'll talk about a proven process. We're going to work on that a little later, converting what you do into a system. And we want to work on what is your guarantee. J.D. just mentioned that. You want to be able to say to your clients, if you hire us, this is what we guarantee. And that's a powerful statement that's so imperative that we spend time working on that. Then we can move to a three-year picture and develop what your business is going to look like in three years because that's going to be the basis of what your one-year plan looks like. How do we get – where do we need to be in one year? that's going to get you to where you need to be in the third year. And so the way you build that one-year plan is in quarterly objectives. You'll find that this whole plan gets wrapped around 90-day increments of time. Now, Traction calls it the rocks, where every person in your organization has an objective for the quarter. What is their rocks? And then we'll work on the issue list, a system for getting issues to the table, and how you work through them, getting them uh, dis what, what Traction calls IDS, identify, discuss, and solve, a system for addressing the issues. Gosh, I wish we had more time to really dive into how these things work. I'm just trying to hit the highlights. But it's imperative that you have a system for addressing the issues. And what this system is built around is weekly meetings to address the issues that build on quarterly meetings that are shooting for one-year goals that lead you to three years and 10 years. So that's the process of implementing your vision. J.D., what thoughts do you have there? Um, mainly around the fact that, wow, when you look at that and you look at that page, really this is a two-page business plan. And the very first time we had our VTO meeting and we established our vision fraction organizer, um, you know, it was it was hard to get through. It was difficult, and we we needed some help uh, along the way. But as we continue to meet on a quarterly basis, as we continue to um, hone in exactly what we do and how we do it, um, really until um, I think it was at the end of uh, last year or at the very end of 2021, was when we came up with building courage and creating wealth because we realized that. When we just don't do tax services. We just don't do those things. We actually do way more than that. And even in the last three months, we have found that 25% of what we do and how we help people is around tax services. And that wouldn't be possible to gain a lot of clarity around that um, unless we had the vision traction organizer, unless we were having these quarterly meetings and weekly meetings to be honing in on that. And that is the rubber uh, of the wheel that, that really helps you get traction in your business. I mean, it really helps you to have everybody moving in the same direction and your leadership team and your whole team in general starts to move in the same direction when you get aligned uh, in this vision traction organizer and why it's such a key component to establish that at the very beginning.